Well, good evening. I've got a uh, itch to make a video after watching Don't Buy a Cheap Replacement Power Supply by YouTube user V Westlife. And it got me to thinking about actually this laptop you're looking at right now. This is my Dell Inspiron 1721. I bought it at the end of July 2007. It's been a faithful machine uh, more or less since that time. It's been my main axe. And even though I have a school laptop that I get to use, it's um, a little small and cramped for me. And since I do music editing with Finale and, and other such programs, I absolutely need this numeric keypad. But that's all besides the point. Uh, I bought two power bricks with this when I got it new. I've got this one right here. That's a stock one. It's, that's what the machine's running off of right now. I've got the 6-cell battery in it, and that's kind of getting toward the end of its life. I need to get new batteries for it. Anywho, this is the stock one. This is another stock one. I'll get back to that later. And there are two that I picked up on eBay afterward. Get this in the light. It says it's made by Dell. They marketed it as being Dell genuine stuff. This is the three-prong model. The stock one was a two-prong. There's another one. That's number four, we'll call that, I suppose. Let's get to one and two. Uh, the reason I bought three and four is because each of these had a different problem. If I unplug this, it should last a little bit on battery life, but here we go. You'll see the problem we got with power brick number one here. The jack on the end is coming loose and that's kind of a hard repair to make because of all this molded plastic around it. But it does make good connection and if that does happen to go south, it's really only exposing the braid on the outside so I'm not too worried about that. Transfers power just fine. The rest of the cord is, uh, output cord is in good shape. No nicks, no scratches, no bumps, no bruises. And the power brick itself, does, uh, it has normal warmth for what it should be. This is a 90 watt model. Supply cord's good, all the way up to the outlet. Now let's get to this one. I was at my parents visiting and I left my laptop plugged into the wall to charge. And unfortunately they have critters in their house cats specifically and one whom we affectionately call little guy little booger sometimes is how he's known he started chewing on the cord all over the cord made a, made a nice break right there and at some point the poor thing shorted out some wires and my mother heard this buzzing coming from my power brick saw that the cat had chewed on it and and I don't know if this power brick is toast or not it might have survived since it's a switching power supply it might have done some interesting gymnastics to try to get that all to work but that power supply I decided not to use anymore because if I were to use it what I'd have to do is find the first spot where the cat started chewing, which is about right there. That doesn't give me an awful lot of cord to work with. So it could have been a short power cord if I decided to take off the end of it. Well, what I'm going to do is something of that nature, but it's not going to involve this brick. Here's a supply cord for it. It's in really good shape. I could interchange that with the other original power brick. So, with one cord with a frayed output end, and one with a chewed up output end. Here I go on eBay. Saw some advice from UXW Bill and uh, he thought I could find some Dell OEM stuff on eBay and luckily um, I think this is good. And we're going to test these in just a little bit. Um, both of these power bricks are good but I'll, I'll show you what we had a problem with. See the supply cords on these are made of a lot tougher plastic and by tougher I mean it's it's not as flexible and it gets breaks in it easily such as what you see right here this cord is actually still usable 
that green shielding has come off of that one copper lead there. That's a ground wire. But none of the other two leads seem to have broken insulation on that. So I'm not too worried. This is the cord we're actually going to use. Uh, not so lucky with this other cord. This is the one I kept winding up and sticking in my my backpack to take to school. Uh, come on. This one I had plugged into a GFCI in my kitchen, dining room area, snack bar area. And you can see that it got several places in it where the outside insulation had come off. But none of the wires were exposed until you get down to this guy down here. And that got compromised such that hot cross neutral and zap and it uh, didn't make any smoke but it sure crispy critted the end of this so we're gonna put this in the place where we know it won't hurt anybody else it didn't pop the GFCI it actually popped the breaker that the whole circuit was on surprise me might have to look at how they wire that GFCI anywho what I did with this item right here is cut off the end of it. Oh, where are you, hand? There you are. Cut off the end of this one, and I've got this unit right here. And when I feel good and brave and in a cutting mood, I'm going to lop off the end of power brick number one. And, uh,. Mr. Weller and I are going to heat stuff up and uh, get some solder on that, get some heat shrink tubing, and hopefully make one more power cord. Now with uh, the crispy crittered one, what we're going to do with that, I threw the other end of it away, but I saved the end. It's right here. And I've got a whole bunch of these types of cords laying around that has... Uh, the end that you'd normally stick into the back of a desktop computer or a monitor or some other device like that. Something your local school technology guy would have drawers full of. But I'm going to see if I can splice all this together with a little bit of heat shrink tubing and get one of these guys going again, these uh, three prong deals. But I have one supply cord here. And we're going to apply the test that V Westlife suggested. Uh, let's let the tech what, the Technics turntable here. Me and my camera stand for a bit. Even though this has uh, exposed wire on the ground side, I don't think we're going to be in any major problem. I've got a AM radio up here, fresh out of the storm shelter. Batteries work fine. Strong AM station right there. Let's light up that dial just a little bit. CC Observer, nice radio. A little pricey, but it works well. Sounds great. Okay. Let's plug this in. And right here. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the, the known good stuff. Well, that's an interesting noise on the radio. Don't know why that's happening. Nothing's plugged in. Okay. Find the other end of this. Let's see what happens. Okay. This lights up just fine. No worse for wear. Really good end on it. I'd love to see this power brick up and running again with a good cord, with a good supply line. Gonna unplug that. And it seems to be doing just fine. I'm not sure if... You know, here's my doubts on, on this unit. This is a slightly different color plastic than the stock model. I don't know if you can see that real well. This one is clearly a lot lighter. This is more of a, a grayish... I see a little tinge of purplish blue in that, but this is a really, really dark black. This is the three conductor model. This is the two conductor model. And just kind of made me wonder if that was actual Dell hardware. But if it isn't Dell hardware, it's a darn good copy, and they're not 
sacrificing any circuits in there that's going to create interference in my CC observer up there. Okay, let's unplug that one. And unplug it from the wall. Let's move this over. And plug it in. It lights up just fine. If this was the one that was in the wall when it zapped, it's not showing any signs of it now. Plug it in. Laptop's taking a charge. It's not doing anything. So it looks like I made a, made a video to show you all sorts of nothing. Either that or maybe you can actually find some decent Dell, possibly OEM equipment on eBay for your Inspiron 1721 that seems to run through power bricks like Cookie Monster runs through cookies. So that's my video. You might see some more in the future if I get good at this video making thing, but I seriously doubt it. I'm no UXW Bill. He's a lot better at, uh, better at it than I am. I've known him since so... Well, we went to school together. He's been doing this a lot longer than I have, though. Alright, that's it for tonight. Have a good one.